Hello everyone, welcome back. This is just going to be a quick, a very quick update video on the tech haul from the other day with the Optiplex computers. Um, so we have good news and bad news. I forgot to video one of the Optiplex 3030s. So we have the 3020 desktop, uh, small form factor desktop, and the other 3030 all in one. But the other one I already taken apart and took the parts out of and forgot to video it. So we have good news. We got one here, the Optiplex 3030 all-in-one that did work, fully functional, just pretty slow, needs an SSD upgrade, and it's full of white paint for some reason. And the small form factor 3020 also worked. Pretty good, actually. That one's pretty fast. This one just needs an SSD upgrade. This one just needs to be re uh, factory reset, and it should be good to go. Might be able to sell it for 40, 50 bucks or so. Maybe pair with a monitor and sell it locally. And we, I'm going to move this out of the way. Here we do have some, these are all the parts that we were able to salvage out of uh, all the other all-in-ones. And everything works. This this came from, just that was separate. Uh, these all came from the all-in-one computers. The uh, Everything everything works good. The SSD works good. RAM works good. Both sets. And we have the i5-7600. The 4590S and the 6500T all in good working condition. Um, so we're looking at a pretty good payday here. Over 150 bucks if everything sells for the right prices. I'm going to keep the SSD, but those there I'm going to list soon and hopefully make over $100, $150 or so. So in this video, we are going to actually be doing a different tech haul. This was just a quick update. I'm going to try to keep it below two minutes, but we're coming up on the mark. So we got some old style laptops we're going to be looking at. Here we are. We have three really old laptops. They are all from the early to mid 90s. Um, this, the only one that does was date stamped is this one. It is dated 1993 on the bottom. There's actually more to this haul than just this. Um, the, they're not as interesting as these ones are though. So I've tested all three of them already. I figured maybe testing isn't the best thing to do, you know. So we got this one has no power brick, unfortunately. I'll probably be ordering one of those. This is my favorite. This one here has power, but no display. Nothing seems to happen. The fans spin. That's about it. This one is fully functional, running Windows XP. It's about, if you want, we can have a look here. It's about probably two to three inches thick. It is one hefty, hefty laptop. So in this video, really, I just want to go over the cosmetic looks of them. There's, I'm not really sure how to repair any of these, but this one we're going to fire up, and the other two are just, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Hopefully, I'm going to get a power brick for this one if I can find one, and we'll see what we can do with it. But this one, let's load up the, this is an IBM, I believe it's a ThinkPad. I'm I think IBM ThinkPad 760 XD. So it is a very old computer. Let's fire it up. Just look at the size of that power brick. You know it's old. Okay, the IBM is all plugged in. Let's see. It worked last time. Let's see if it works this time. There it comes. Let me, uh, let me see the screen better. Look at that. Really, really old. What's that say? 48 megabytes of RAM. Window. Oh. Runs Windows 98. I thought it was running XP. It's Windows 98. But even better. Oh, just a couple warning messages. I don't know if you can hear it. Let me bring you in closer. Hear the hard drive rattling. There it is. Windows 98. There should be a background screen. 
I guess the background screen's not going to load. So, oh, there it is. Figures as I say something. So let me turn my light back on. The funny thing with this laptop is, which most, you know, every laptop does nowadays, there's no touchpad. So you have to use this little knobby thing here, which is broken. You see, I can just roll my thumb or my finger around. Move the mouse all around with it. So let's let's go into the system settings. I'm gonna see what this thing has for specifications. So to get there, for anybody who may not know, just you see my mouse down here at the bottom. You just click on this little start button. Pretty pretty much the same as you do now. And then you go to settings, and then control panel, and wait for that to load. Do 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 do. Here we go. And we go to system settings right here. And there we go. We go over to, I believe, right here. It is a, all it says is that it's a Pentium processor, that's all it says, and 48 megabytes of RAM, and Microsoft Windows 98 Second Edition. And that's really all the specifications we need to know this thing is really old, which you can tell by looking at it. The other, the other unique this, this, the other unique thing this computer has, let me zoom you back out, is the keyboard. Has these little levers right here. I don't know if you can tell or not, but the keyboard actually picks up and down. Let me get you a little bit closer. You see here these little levers where my finger is? The keyboard goes up and down. If only they built them like this still today. Isn't that something? And this is a flat display. It can lay flat. So that's a neat little feature. What else do we get? It does indeed have a little DVD tray which I'm surprised, being the age of this computer. Push that back in. On this side, we have room for floppy drives. I believe it's what those are. It's pretty bad, I'm not even sure. Uh, we have very noisy keys, which I'm actually a fan of. The colorful IBM ThinkPad logo. And uh, I'm not really sure where else to go. Let's uh, keep looking around this side. Here we have a RJ11? Is that a modem? Maybe it's RJ45. We have... I'm not sure what those are. Uh, maybe an audio jack, power switch, headphone jack. And then the this is the latch for the screen. When the screen's down, you pull that back, pull the screen up. And then this is like a little cover for something. On to the back side now, there's this sliding door here. Look at the size of that jack. I don't know what it is. I'm not exactly familiar with old laptops like this. I just find them fascinating with the size of these ports that they had on them. I don't know if it was for some type of docking station, maybe, or a printer port. I don't know. But if you have any idea, leave me a comment. I'd like to know. And then over here, we have nothing. We have this inch. Don't mind the broken charger. Broken charger here. A very weird uh, power jack with this strange plastic cover over it. See, four pins instead of just one, like the today's laptops. Okay, going back, we made the full circle now. We have a mouse port. Uh, these are the, I don't even know how to work. Yeah, that's like a ex expansion bay slot. The other latch, the other side of the screen, and underneath we have a foam padded battery, which is something I've never seen before. It's like a foam texture. And then we have all the trademarks and such and warning labels. Uh, manufactured by IBM in Mexico, registered trademark IBM. I don't see a year anywhere, which is what I was looking for. I might just be missing it. But, uh, oh, right here, copyright, 1997 and 81, so it's a 97, I'm going to guess. Uh, designed for 95, Windows. Um, that's it for the bottom, all right, go moving on. And on the keyboard, we have this other little LCD screen. I have not been able to figure out how to or what it's used for. I'm going to assume maybe it's like quick notes or calculations or something. Somehow, I have not figured it out yet. Maybe Windows 98 don't support it and 95 did. I'm not sure. Two clickers, left and right. 
then you just get your standard United States keyboard, uh, two big speakers, one here and one here. I have no idea how to test the sound, mainly because it can't get on the internet to do anything because it's Windows XP. But I think that's going to do it for this IBM ThinkPad. Uh, you've seen it run, and the top very plain. You saw a little sticky note there, colorful logo. It's going to do it for this one. Let's look at the Gateway 2000 color book. So this here is the Gateway 2000 color book. Um, this one is quite a bit cleaner than that last IBM. Um, this one does not turn on currently because I don't have a charger. Um, it has the colorful Gateway 2000 logo there. Very mechanical-like keys. I'm sure they are mechanical keys. Noisy space bar. This one does not have a trackpad either. I, there's no way to move a mouse, as a matter of fact. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, door. Some type of ports in there. Like I said, I don't not in no way near familiar with old laptops. So this one is this one a flat folding screen? It is. This one also folds flat. So oh, the nice big logo on the top, the top cover. Uh, flipping it over. Yeah, nothing on this side, but the screen latch on the left. On this side, nothing except, what is this? I haven't even looked at these really yet. Let me see if I can get that open. So it looks like just an expansion bay like the last one had. Nothing important there. Moving around to the back side. We have just the charger. And then it looks like another door. Oh, well, there we go. We got some ports. Looks like VGA, serial. Parallel mouse, uh, PS2 for the mouse, and then that's it. So this computer, really, I have nothing to say about because I haven't been able to turn it on. And I'm going to assume that it's running Windows ME or something similar. Um, let's go to the Toshiba Tektra. This here is the Toshiba Tektra 550 CDT, long model number, but that's what happened. Uh, this one is in the worst shape of all three of them. See, it's pretty dirty. Uh, this one as well does not have a trackpad because of its age, just has two, four actually, clickers and the mouse is up here and this little knob. Uh, this one does not turn on either. It, if you plug it in, press the power button, the fan spin up, nothing happens, the screen doesn't come on, so I'm not sure about this one. Um, otherwise, we have some volume knob there, and then we have some, uh, oh, these are display adjustments. All your lights for your status, battery, hard drive, etc. On this side, we're missing a door. Another expansion bay. Uh, CD-ROM drive. On the back side, you can see it's pretty beat up on the top. We almost like got burned there, maybe. This one's probably not going to do anything. Big dent there. Uh, going to the back side. We have the power jack. The audio microphone and music jack it looks like music to me right there uh infrared i believe receiver ps2 port and then the vent and that opens let's see hey there we go we got vga and serial again very nice and then we have another door here another parallel port just like the last one and then on this side, we have more ports and a big turbo fan looking thing. Oh, we actually have USB 1.0, and I don't know what that is. I don't know what a lot of these are. More expansion bay. This here is the power button, which has a sliding cover that you can't accidentally shut it off. So I'll turn it on, just press that button there. And then it looks like a reset button right above it. Um, otherwise than that, this one is the worst of the three, so we're gonna have, we're gonna have to let this one get a charger coming in the mail, and I don't know what I'm gonna do with the other IBM, uh, let me show you just quickly the other two. Here are the other two, not going to go over them in detail, but we did pick up a Vostro 1000, which is Dell, uh, Toshiba Satellite, I'm sure the model number, the ticker on the bottom is scratched off. And then we have this old Panasonic VHS uh, camera, which I picked up, and it supposedly has 700 times zoom on it. I find that hard to believe, but digital image digital image stabilization, and that's picked up pretty good haul there from the transfer station. 
Um, I'll have to keep try to keep you guys updated. This video is running a bit long. I'll keep you guys updated how these how these computers turn out and it, that Gateway 2000. If I get a charger for it, we'll see what happens with it. Thank you guys for watching this quick review, and I will keep you posted on these computers.